Unity 6 is finally here and it looks to be a game changer in every way. From the massive performance upgrades, even better multiplayer support, and a ton of multiplayer templates that we get to play with, to the groundbreaking VR and AR tools. It looks like this release has something for everyone. Whether you're a seasoned dev or just starting out, these new features will redefine how you build games. In this video, I'm going to be covering some of the best things that Unity 6 has to offer. I mean, stick around to the end of the video because some of the best things are a ton of free assets that Unity's offering that I'm mentioning throughout the video and a few asset bundles that Unity has launched in celebration of the release of this engine. If it's your first time meeting me, I do Unity tutorials, game dev tutorials, and I have a bit of a focus in VR. Now, I think I have to mention this because everyone has to mention this when it comes to Unity. The runtime fee is officially gone. It has been completely canceled, so developers will no longer be charged per installation once a project passes a certain threshold. As a sign of goodwill, I think Unity's also given us the option Option to remove the splash screen. So the made with Unity splash screen is now going to be an optional thing that you can add into your games, even under the Unity personal plan. On top of that, the revenue cap has also been raised a little bit. So it used to be $100,000 and now it is $200,000 before you have to start paying Unity. With that out of the way, let's dive into the good stuff. Let's kick things off with the graphics enhancements and the real-time ray tracing. Unity 6 is introducing better support for real-time ray tracing, so you'll be able to bring hyper-realistic lighting and reflections to your games, making them look stunning for anyone who has a computer that's strong enough to handle real-time ray tracing. On top of that, we'll get spatial temporal processing, which is a new upscaling technique introduced into Unity 6, which is going to allow us to optimize performance by upscaling frames that were rendered at a lower resolution. In Speaking of boosting rendering performance, it looks like we are getting a ton of new features. Depending on your content, you might be able to see improvements reduce CPU workload by 30 to 50% while providing smoother and faster rendering across various platforms. Now, this is all due to one of their most standout features with Unity 6, which is the new GPU Resident Drawer, which is going to take your performance to the next level by offloading more work to the GPU. Instead of the CPU managing everything, the GPU now handles tasks like culling and instancing. This means it is going to decide which objects to render, drastically reducing the CPU load. Thanks to compute shaders and indirect rendering, Unity 6 manages draw calls more efficiently, making it perfect for large-scale environments or games with tons of objects in them. Now, keep in mind this is only going to be for URP, SRP, and HDRP, as the built-in render appears to be getting phased out as we move into the future. Unity 6 is also going to be introducing adaptive probe volumes, which I've mentioned a few times already. I love these things. I love the idea behind them. It will allow you to dynamically improve your global illumination, perfect for games with any dynamic environments, especially with dynamic lighting. Uni6 ensures that even the most complex scenes render smoothly without sacrificing performance. So we can finally have dynamic lighting without burning up all the performance or time setting up all those light probes. Even cooler, this feature should allow for the transition of day and night cycles in games, also known as APV Sky Occlusion. So if you've ever wanted to throw in a day-night cycle transition into your game, it looks like this is going to become easier now than ever. I've already talked about these quite a bit already, and I've even made a video covering it. I've been using Unity 6 Preview for some time, and I love what I see. So if you want to learn more about Adaptive Pro Volumes and you want a little quick start guide, you should check out my video in the description below. Now, if you want to dive in even more to all these new graphical additions that we're getting in Unity 6, Unity is actually going to provide their Kingdom demo that they've uh, showcased a few times. So you'll be able to open up this project and dive in and see how they're able to utilize all of these different things to get a very complex scene working on a mobile device. So thanks Unity, very nice. Now if you don't want to dive into a project and check it all out, you can also watch a pretty cool real-time cinematic that puts all of these new graphical improvements into a real-time cinematic. You should definitely check it out. It's called Time Ghost. They showcase this at their keynote. I mean everyone was buzzing about it a little bit because it is kind of visual candy. I mean just looking at this thing, things exploding, a lot of particle effects, dynamic lighting. It's 
it is gorgeous, and they do say this is a real-time cinematic. So you can see what the potential of this new Unity 6 engine can be. On top of that, it looks like we also get access to the Ghost Time environment, so we can see how that environment works, which is a surprise addition that I did not know they were releasing until today as well as the Time Ghost characters. So you can see how they animated that person and also did all the fabric and clothing on them. So these are all nice free little assets that Unity's tossed into us so we can see how all these new things work. One of the major changes coming to the Unity 6 is the shift to a more generational release model. So this means that Unity will now release updates in defined generations. So we're gonna be starting out with Unity 6 and it's gonna be hanging out with us for about two years or so. And then they're gonna continue you building on this core version over time instead of doing these frequent major version releases and we'll see long-term support with incremental feature updates so the first big milestone will be unity 6.1 so we'll see patches throughout this time and then officially get unity 6.1 released and they're promising to bring even more features and performance optimizations so this model is going to ensure that we have a stable foundation to work on as developers while we also get to adopt all these new tools and improvements without disrupting too many changes in the engine. Personally, myself, I love this new incremental changing and updating. I think it's very cool that we get to stick with one engine that we're comfortable with, and we don't have to stress about shifting over every year or so to a brand new engine and trying to import a old project into this new big release. Instead, we'll just get these nice little patches, and then eventually we get more features on top of the engine that we're already using. So I love this. Moving Moving on to the multiplayer features, Unity has done a lot of investing into all the multiplayer functionality. So Unity 6 is going to be providing a new multiplayer framework that supports both dedicated servers and peer-to-peer -peer networking, giving developers a range of options depending on the scale and nature of their projects. Additionally, it looks like latency compensation is greatly improved, ensuring that your gameplay is going to be a lot smoother going into the future. This new framework is also going to work alongside Netcode for entities, which is optimized for large-scale multiplayer games, allowing for more efficient synchronization of your game states across multiple clients. I mentioned before that we're going to get a few goodies that we could play with when it comes to multiplayer, so these are going to be widgets or templates or whatever you want to call them. It's essentially going to be Unity 6 introducing pre-built multiplayer assets to help streamline more common multiplayer features such as matchmaking, lobbies, in-game chat, all these little things. So you'll be able to go in click a few boxes, and then Unity is going to make some recommendations of what things you might want to try out or add into your game. And that way you can just hop in and really get to making the multiplayer game that you want to without having to, without the hustle and bustle of having to piece together all the things on your own. So this is going to be really nice. Obviously, a lot of these features are going to be showcasing their multiplayer solutions. But primarily, this is going to give us the tools to both make small scale or large scale multiplayer games so we can focus more on the gameplay rather than having to focus all on the backend infrastructure. Now one thing that really stuck out to me with all this multiplayer stuff and Unity 6 is the ability to test multiplayer games directly in the editor. So this feature is going to allow us to simulate multiple clients at the same time in a single instance of the Unity editor. So when you're testing out multiplayer functionality and you're wondering if this would actually work with all the different people in the game, this is going to give us the ability to test all of these things out in the editor and so we don't have to stress about too much of running multiple instances or anything we can use one instance of the editor have four different simulated multiplayer clients and that way you'll be able to debug and test and iterate even faster with all your multiplayer logic now in big celebration of unity 6 finally being released it looks like unity has released or offered a new unity 6 toolkit bundle that you can get 15 dollars it looks like it gets you a bunch of assets that would typically be for 2D games. Uh, if you pay $30, you get a few more assets that I find to be very cool. We have one that is a Candy Crush remake. So if you're into match three games or want to make a match three game, usually it runs for 200 bucks. So getting this for $30 ain't bad. We also have a humanoid animator over here. We have medieval fantasy effects. Uh, we got Sinti, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. You can see here, I've actually already purchased some of these. We have FPS Engine, which is, is a pretty well-known asset, I would say, in the Unity store. And if you want to make a first-person shooter, this is a great way to jumpstart all that. 
that. And then a few things that really stick out to me just because I love visuals so much. This Toon Fantasy Nature asset is just gorgeous. I am a sucker for anything that is beautiful and has nice lighting. So I'm, I honestly, I think I'm just going to buy this bundle simply for this. And we have a few more other shaders. You might want to check out this toolkit if you want to jumpstart some things, acquire some new assets. I'll be providing an affiliate link down below. It will help out the channel if you click and buy this through that. And I appreciate your support. Cinti Studios is also having a major sale kind of paired with the release of Unity 6. If you don't know who Cinti is, well, you've probably seen their assets before because they are used in a ton of games. And that's because it is a very high quality product that they offer. All of their low poly characters, models, and scenery are fantastic. I own a ton of these already because I have a strange addiction to buying assets and you might want to check this out. I'll provide a link below as well. But let's move on to the final section of this, which is going to be VR and XR tools. For XR development, looks like we are going to be getting improved scene setup. So they will be kind of like the multiplayer templates. We'll be able to boot in and have things that are already in place so we can just get going and start developing and not have to re-implement the things that we've already implemented a million times before. So that should be really nice. We're getting a mixed reality template, which will be a big boon if you want to make a uh, mixed reality multiplayer experiences. And then <laughs> one of my favorite things is a MetaQuest build profile. This isn't in yet. This this is going to be added a little later. I do not see it on there yet, but it's going to be a dedicated build profile just to build to the MetaQuest, which should hopefully help us fight the very, very traumatizing Android manifest that we build when we build out for the quest. We're also getting foveated rendering, which I'm sure I'm going to get butchered in the comments again. I think I screwed it up again. This feature is going to improve rendering performance by reducing the detail on the periphery of our user's view, maintaining high fidelity where the player is focused. So we're going to be able to squeeze out a little more performance on our VR headsets by reducing the detail around where the user's looking, but still maintaining really good definition right where they're focused, squeezing out as much performance as we can. Now, as far as all these things go, as I've mentioned, uh, some haven't fully been released yet. Some are still waiting waiting on. Uh, the foveated rendering should be out, but the MetaQuest build profile isn't out quite yet. Haven't looked for the mixed reality template myself, but I have tested out a few of their other templates that are there and they look very nice and they are ready to go. Overall, I'm very excited what Unity 6 has to offer us. I'm excited to see what the future brings. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in Unity 6, if you're going to make the big switch, or if you are still waiting by until maybe Unity 7 before you're convinced that Unity's back on track. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.